What's going on everybody? Chris Chavez here with Fandrew.com. You're watching the Android Overload for Thursday, March 7th. And if you'll have me, these are your top Android news stories. Jelly beans, jelly beans everywhere. Uh, apparently a handful of devices are receiving their jelly bean updates. The Verizon Motorola Droid Razor and Razor Max are uh, set to receive a soak test directly from Motorola. Uh, some users that who are a part of Motorola's feedback network, it's like a super exclusive forums for testing out new software updates, actually received an email letting them know that an update is underway. And typically after a soak test begins, it's not too much longer before we see the update officially roll out through all channels on Verizon. Another Android handset that's long overdue for their Jelly Bean update is the uh, AT&T HTC One X. It's been a long time coming. We've seen the update roll out on the international version. I can't remember how long ago. And it seems like whenever a new phone receives a Jelly Bean update, we have the same guy on Fandroid that actually <laughs> leaves a comment saying, and yet no update for the One X on AT&T. So uh, this one's for you, buddy. Another phone getting its update is the LG Optimus G on Sprint. This little guy right here. One of my personal favorite Android devices, the Jelly Bean update will do nothing but enhance uh, just about everything there is to already love on the device. The phone's already blazing fast enough as it is, so I just can't wait to update the phone and uh, check it out for myself. Now, all these updates couldn't have uh, slipped in at a better time. We're only two short months away from Google I.O. where we expect Google to announce all the new features with the next version of Android. And although the name and version number hasn't been confirmed just yet, we're expecting it to be called Key Lime Pie. The Asus Transformer AIO, which we gave you guys a pretty lengthy hands-on with back at CES, if you guys don't remember, finally has a release date and a price attached to it. So it looks like April 12th is going to be the big day and the Asus Transformer AIO is going to retail for $1,300. And if that sounds a bit expensive to you, uh, let me tell you a little bit more about the tablet PC thing. The Asus Transformer AIO is actually uh, part Android and part Windows 8 PC. The monitor itself is actually an 18.4 inch uh, fully touchscreen Android tablet. It's got a Tegra 3 processor, one gigabyte of RAM, so it's a little bit modest, I guess, on specs. But once you dock that sucker into its dock, the dock itself is actually a full Windows PC. So you have an Intel Core i5 processor up to eight gigabytes of RAM, a ton of different ports and everything else, and it actually just switches to Windows as soon as you dock it. Of course, you can take the monitor out and you could actually flip on the fly between Windows 8 touchscreen or our Android. So it's actually pretty darn cool. So if you just need a really awesome PC, but you kind of want like, some of the functionality that Android provides uh, for on the go use, you can take it around, play Angry Birds on the couch, dock it, and get some real work done. Then the Asus Transformer AIO could be a pretty awesome PC for you. Never one to miss a golden opportunity uh, in Bash Android. Apple's marketing chief Phil Schiller tweeted a link to a report showing that Android malware is at an all-time high. Apparently 79% of all mobile threats are actually targeting Android and where Phil Schiller would of course have you believe that iOS is a million times more secure and Android is just this crazy virus ridden cesspool. It's actually really not as bad as Schiller makes it out to be, of course. The majority of malware actually targeting Android users is comes from uh, pirated apps and uh, whereas sites and all that stuff. It isn't actually directly downloaded from the Google Play Store. Now, every now and then a malicious app can make its way into the Google Play Store, but Google is pretty quick to not only take it down, but they can also um, forcibly remove that from any user's phone. So it's kind of just like the real world that you avoid spreading your seed all around and uh, stay away from like the bad parts of town I guess. <laughs> Stick to the Google Play Store and you'll be fine. If you've been kind of torn between choosing either the Nexus 10 or possibly even maybe mixing things up and getting an iPad, there was actually a pretty good review from someone over on our sister site iSource.com who purchased his own Nexus 10. This is a total you know Apple I wouldn't say Apple, Apple fanboy, but a definite Apple user. This guy's owned all the iPads, uh, has the iPhones and all that stuff, but he decided to give the Nexus 10 a spin. His review for the most part was pretty spot on and it actually makes a pretty good, I guess, resource for those that don't want to just go onto Android websites where fanboys are 
just saying nothing but good things about Android. Sometimes you want to hear, you know, a different point of view. And whereas I personally could never make the switch to iOS, I don't think it's really wrong or I don't really hate on anybody for making that choice. I have a lot of friends who have had Android phones and made the switch over to iOS. And I think it's just a different operating system for different people, different strokes for different folks. So make sure you hit the link uh, down below to be taken over to that review and uh, see it for yourself. And it looks like that's going to just about wrap up the Android overload for Thursday, March 7th. For links to all the articles I talked about in this video, make sure you hit the description area. Don't forget to thumbs up if this video was helpful to you at all and subscribe if you haven't already. With Fandra.com, I am Chris Chavez. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you tomorrow.